Hey, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. Welcome everybody. We're at the Stanford Graduate School of Business for the Future of Innovation event, a half day event, three or four panels, talking about some really big issues that are way beyond the technology and the social implications of a lot of things that are happening in terms of diversity, robots taking over the, over the world, silicon angles all over the world, and what's going to happen next. And I'm really happy to have Rob Siegel on, who was the moderator of the panel and consistently took a positive tone every time things kind of went to the dark side in the Skynet. He's a partner at Exceed Capital, a lecturer here at Stanford, but most importantly, the moderator of the event. So thanks for joining us, uh, Rob. Great to be here, thank you for having me. So what did you think? It, it seemed like kind of every topic would kind of take this dichotomous, there's kind of the dark side and a positive side. Mm -hmm. What's your kind of takeaway? Well, I think our job at Stanford is to be pushing uh, envelopes on business and thinking not just about how one makes money, but the broader social implications of what's happening. And the three panels we had today touched on all of those issues. Silicon Valley as a leadership for innovation versus other spots in the world, diversity in the workplace, and of course the role of the gig economy and a variable workplace. Now you're in a great spot, because as a VC you get to see a lot of new and innovative thinkers. Um, being here at the, at the school, I think it's so great to have kind of one foot in academia with, with the young folks, or not that young, but the young folks coming up. Um, what, what's your take on kind of the difference between the, the youngsters coming up through the school now and what you see kind of with more of the I guess you really don't deal with probably too many old people. You're a venture capitalist. You don't like old guys coming in. Well, that's not exactly <laughs> true. Your experience can inform what happens. Uh, Andy Grove used to tell us at Intel that every generation thinks they've discovered sex. And by definition, that can't be true because we wouldn't be here as a species that. if that were the case. Right. And so what you find is you've got new technologies and new ways of doing business. However, they can be informed by things that we've learned in the past. I think with the students, what we see is uh, a very broad global perspective. They understand uh, that their businesses might start here in the, in the valley, but very quickly will become national and global operations, and they want to make sure that they can be getting to scale with a speed and an energy that's required to have a real impact. Yeah, it's interesting on the diversity front because so many um, successful startups are founded by immigrants yeah. or first generation Americans, a, a completely disproportionate number to the population. Why do you see, why do you think that is and, and what's kind of the takeaway from that? I think our country has been built by immigrants over the last several hundred years and people come here for a higher quality of life. They come here, they want to give their children the opportunity to live in freedom, to have economic comfort. And so I think that, that entrepreneurs when they often come from immigrant families because they're hungry, they may not have necessarily had the creature comforts that, that older generations have had. And so they see an opportunity where no one's getting in the way and no one's slowing them down. Right. And I think that's part of the magic of the Valley. When we're teaching in front of the class, it's like teaching at the UN, you know, accents, names, that the, from all over the world, you see it from North America, South America, Europe, Asia. Uh, it is pretty magical when you see the, the the blending of people, and they bring that global perspective into everything they do when they're here for two years. You know, it's really funny, kind of in the political scene right now, which is so much civil discord. And and you know, I think we've it's really unfortunate as a society. It's really hard to have a discussion and a mm -hmm. disagreement and keep it civil and keep it logical before people start going bananas. And you know, the American dream is dead. Blah blah blah. But you can see. In these people that have come here, that maybe it's not the best system, maybe sure we have bugs and, uh -huh. and warts and this and that, but they're the ones that see that that dream is still alive and, and come to places like Stanford and Silicon Valley to actually execute on it and many times do. But if you want to have a good day, hang out with me. Whether I'm here at Stanford and you see the students who have so much energy for the impact they're going to have on the world, be it in business or in nonprofits, an entrepreneur who comes in with an idea that he or she thinks is really going to have a big impact on the universe, everybody brings that positive attitude. If you look at the history of our country over the last 250 years, you know, the post-World War II period was actually kind of an anomaly where uh, you were able to get things done politically, and there's the, the apocryphal story of Reagan and Tip O'Neill having a cocktail on a Friday afternoon, but yet in the history of our, of our country, if you go back to the times of Alexander Hamilton, politics has never been bad. Politics used to be and always has been very aggressive. And so I think what we're seeing now is just perhaps a, a, a reversion to the mean of what politics has been in our country, but we've now got social media to amplify it in ways <laughs> that it wasn't amplified before. Every single thing, right? So on the panels today, uh, you kind of cheated because you, know, you prepared for the panels and you talked every Everybody. Uh -huh. But were there any surprises that came out in the panels that, that either you didn't expect or kind of reinforced something that's you know, kind of in the back of your head that you weren't necessarily looking for, or maybe in the, in the Q&A? Um, that was a surprise today. 
I don't know that I was surprised by anything, but I felt comforted knowing that we saw a great blend of academic foundations and practical use of the ideas, be it you know what's how the labor force is changing. We had one panel that was very much driven by economists and a very academic uh, perspective on things, but then able to then talk about what are issues of displacement of a, of a labor force and how does that impact the everyday individual and the, the, that kind of conversation could be generated within this context. Uh, I was also very pleased to see the engagement from the people in the audience, that they were very interested in the topics as well. So it made me feel good that the classes we're teaching, the research that we're doing is relevant outside of this academic environment. Yeah, oh, I mean, this this place, Stanford, uh, as just a, a physical place, an institution, a place to bring people, is such a powerful and an underrated driver of what makes Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley. You know, I, I spent some time in Philly, uh, at Penn, great school, but People don't stay in, in the way that when they come here, they stay, you know, they plant roots. And, and it's so powerful that, that, that Sanford does pull in the surrounding areas, they pull in the neighborhoods, you know, you've got things like the football game, which, which, which is a real community yeah. event that, that is such a driver of the magic of this place. Uh, Stanford as a university is, in a, again, one of those moments in time where we've had successful alumni, we've got great researchers and spectacular students, and it becomes a positive reinforcing circle where people come and want to stay. And it doesn't hurt that the weather's like this. <laughs> That's and there's the big not part a, of it. There's not a, a cloud <laughs> in the sky anywhere. Uh, but the, the people that you get to talk to, the, the, there is a diversity of opinions and background, socioeconomic, that makes it a very vibrant opportunity to be here. And if you like that, if you like being challenged, you like the fact that it's difficult, because it's hard to kind of get things going. There's no place like it. And, and broader in the Bay Area, you know, you've got the University of California at Berkeley, on the other side of the Bay, UCSF in San Francisco, San Jose State, Santa Clara. You really get a real magnet for a lot of young, energetic people uh, who come here and then want to stay here because they enjoy their experiences that they have. Right. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot before I let you go. You get to sit and listen to a lot of entrepreneurs. What are you seeing from the venture side? What things are kind of coming through the door or anything? New is are, are we are, is there some, some 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 things that we don't necessarily think about beyond AI and yeah. ML and AR and VR? Um, what are some of the things you guys are seeing? Some themes. So I think if we're talking about it in the press, it's already too late. And the role of a venture capitalist is to be on the tip of the curve, but more importantly, following the entrepreneurs who are on the tip of a curve. So we're at a platform change. You know what's happened with mobile, what's happened with enterprise software, big big changes, and we're going to continue to see big changes. But we're actually getting that transition out. We're at the end of a boom and bust cycle here in the valley and that means the new boom is going to be starting soon. And the good news is no one knows what's coming. And that's like reset, hitting the reset button for all of us. Right. So I'm excited because now I know that everything that I might have dismissed before, I should be paying attention to because we're about to have a new world order. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen in one year or three years or five years, but I know it's coming. And there's a Schumpeterian and creative destruction of Silicon Valley, and we're going through it again right now. Yeah. I can't wait for the next one. It's amazing, you know, people talk about, is will there be other Silicon Valleys? But having been here for over 30 years yeah. and just to see wave after after wave after wave of new thing uh, is just fascinating. And another one, the one that's in the press is right around the corner. I don't even know when you're talking about, we'll have to, we'll have to check in in five years and uh, see how it all worked out. It's a pretty amazing thing that, that whether it was started with semiconductors and then personal computers and then web 1.0 and then social media, uh, then now new sorts of platforms, the sharing economy, it just keeps happening over and over again. I can't wait for the next one. With those pesky guys in Seattle got the cloud thing. So we'll, have to, we'll let them have the cloud because it's cloudy in Seattle. So that only makes sense. All right, Rob. Well, thanks for taking you a bet. few minutes uh, of your time and, and really great job on the panel Thank today. Thank you very much. Tough thanks to, for having me. Tough to manage all those big egos on both sides, <laughs> on the panels and in the audience. So he's Rob Siegel. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We're at the Stanford Graduate School of Business. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.